Hello everyone. <clears throat> so I'm here, I want to talk about where we left off with the three elements of achieving and sustaining a state of being woke and glowed up, right? So we all want to be able to feel that we're very present, we're very at one with the world around us, connected, blissful, in harmony, and in peace. These are qualities of being woke. Right? This is kind of like being awakened, being enlightened, and being free from the constant bombardment of thoughts and mental activity of worries and regrets and the past and you know anxieties and fears about the future. We can really enter a state of being that is spontaneous, joyful, vibrant, and characterized by a deep sense of peace and contentment and knowing who you really are and who and what you're connected to. State of woke, right? So one of the elements I mentioned, I mentioned diet, the physical part, then I mentioned the psychological part, and then the spiritual part. In this video, I wanna talk about the psychology part because I said something, I said that one of the requirements or fundamental elements is to have self-joy and self-contentment. Now, that can seem like a daunting task if somebody doesn't already have that or is not in tune with that. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's so much to do, like, we have to evaluate the self-belief systems, beliefs about ourselves. We have to evaluate, relive like negative trauma from the past, from childhood, for example. And I'm not saying not to do those things. It's good to do these things. It's good to revisit, um, expel or express any suppressed or repressed emotions and go through this process of going down your history, especially childhood and seeing where certain belief patterns come from. I'm a great advocate for that. But what I want to talk about now is that we can sort of bypass, or at least temporary and with practice, becoming more and more sustaining periods of achieving a state of joy and contentment very directly and very quickly through accessing altered states of consciousness. Altered states of consciousness or extraordinary expanded states of consciousness are always associated with enlightenment and being woke but they entail more things right and a lot of times people think of drugs when i say altered states of consciousness i'm not talking about that at all i'm simply talking about states that one can reach through meditation and fasting breath work there's several modes to get there without drugs and to really go deep within the self and really cut through the distractions and the layers to really see what's what's really there and like merge with that part of yourself and sort of have conscious intentional control over these deeper underlying beliefs, attitudes, uh, moods, disposition towards things. Uh, so. And also uh, anxiety, sources of anxiety within ourselves. We can really go deep and really kind of become one and merge and find that control, that conscious intention, way of navigating all these things in a very rapid way. So I'm talking about entering states of meditation. Entering states where you're finding those pockets, you're creating and extending the space between that constant thought, constant stream of thoughts and mental activity. There's an internal dialogue. It's almost like someone's always talking. And a lot of times in society, we identify as we being that voice, like that voice is us generating all these thoughts. And like I've said before, I believe that a lot of these thoughts are just being received by the brain, not generated by the brain like a collective echo of all the collective subconscious and all the programming and all media and all these things are creating this stream, right? And the brain is more of a receiver sometimes, like a TV set or a radio station, and sort of just tuning into the channels that are out there. So by being able to take that conscious control and tension, having a meditation practice, 
a practice where you're able to create pockets of space between thoughts. So generally in our everyday consciousness, we're out here, we're our mind, let's say this is our mind, right? And it's our mind is always directing its attention towards something. That's the nature of mind. And usually we're having that direction towards our thoughts and then here's the world beyond, here's the world beyond thoughts and here's the thoughts. And the thoughts are sort of coloring and filtering how we perceive this world. And here's us, we're like the real source of, of mind and attention. And it's just constantly being directed to the world through thoughts and thoughts about the world. But if you t take a moment and create a practice where you're taking these moments to turn that attention away from the thoughts and back upon the self, or to create gaps between the thoughts so that instead of the self being like blurry all the time, having gaps between the thoughts allows you to glimpse the reality of what's actually happening here and now and your true self, your true nature here and now. When you're able to do that and find those spaces between your thoughts and just dwell and like and listen rather than talk in your own internal dialogue, really listen and look for the observer or the source of the attention, the source of your mind, like where is it all coming from, who you truly are you begin to experience an expansion of consciousness in which there's no room for self-doubt and insecurity or self-hatred or any of those things. Those things sort of fall away to a silence, a great vast silence, like an ocean of stillness. And you become more and more blended with that ocean of stillness. You start to identify more and more with the depths of that ocean, that stillness that is in the depths of your being, rather than the activity on the surface, which is like, the, you know, like waves in this metaphor. The waves is what we really express as our personality and as our like mental activity. But in the depth of our being, there is a stillness. And that stillness can be used to cultivate self-love, self-contentment, confidence, even courage. You know, you really can set your mind on, on what you want and hold your attention there and consciously create the life that you want to create and experiences that you want to create in life. And I will continue to give these practices, but really I just wanted to address the psychology of being woke here and that I'll... Although it's very helpful and I completely encourage people to go back and do, um, you know, psychoanalysis, reflection, cathartic release of emotions. Uh, there's also techniques that use the breath and that use meditation to, uh, to also go very quickly, very deeply into the system, into the subconscious and all these parts of your system to create rapid change within yourself. And I encourage you to explore those as well. I uh, thank you. I hope this video was helpful. Please feel free to share, subscribe, like, all those good helpful things are always welcome. So that's it. Thank you so much. Much love.